Hey everybody, Bunker Labs, welcome to another all in interview. We are all in for you to help continue to move your businesses forward um, during uncertain times, just like the one that we are in. And I am really excited to welcome one of our entrepreneurs, Chris Vandenberg, welcome. Hi guys. <laughs> So Chris, just give us a little bit of an introduction, a little bit of a rundown about you, yourself, your military affiliation, and what your company is as well. So my name's Chris Vandenberg. I own um, RWBs, it stands for Red, White, and Blues, uh, Chow Bus or Chow ATX. I were based out of Austin, Texas. I've been in business about two and a half years. Uh, seems like forever ago, but it doesn't at all. Um, seems like just yesterday. Um, especially with what's going on right now. Um, yeah, I'm, I was uh, 12 years Army, um, four active or five active Iraq, and then the rest National Guard, but um, neither here nor there when it comes to that. But um, family history has been in the military too, dad, uncle, grandpas. So. Deep family history and also loving your, uh, your gear, your American flag gear that you've got on. Um, so Chris, you know, you mentioned, especially right now that you're kind of feeling like it was just yesterday you started your business. And I would imagine that a lot of entrepreneurs feel that way mm -hmm. because it might feel like they're starting over a bit. Um, can you talk about RWB Chow Bus and a little bit about how the past month has changed, um, what you're doing and changed your business and how you're responding to that? Yeah, I guess I didn't kind of go in what we do actually. So what we do is I started off as a food truck, um, supposed to be transitioning into a brick and mortar kind of sports bar atmosphere. Um, the food truck has taken a little longer because, you know, kind of startup costs and everything. Um, it's not exactly what you would think it would be. Um, it's a lot better than a brick and mortar restaurant, but there's still a lot that goes into it. Um, but that being said, um, we kind of, in this time that we're going through right now, I was already in the process of transitioning and pivoting um, over the last like nine months because my my bus had broken down and I was on, I was mobile. So I, so when it comes to food trucks, like you can either be mobile or you can be stationary. And a lot of people, especially in Austin, since Austin is one of the hubs for um, food trucks and the food truck scene here is unbelievable. There's over 20,000 food trucks in Austin. So it's pretty crazy. But and with all that competition, you would think, how are you making any money? But there's still a lot of avenues to, t uh, to head up and to go towards that, you know, especially if you're mobile. If you're mobile, then you definitely have a, a better niche than some that are just stationary that just work out of a set location. So I was mobile, truck broke down. I ended up being uh, stationary, but I transitioned into kind of a third party um partnership with a company called Fuda. So they, um, they basically schedule us out for these office parks and we go. So what we did, we take the food truck to these different office parks, set up lunch for two hours and people can come out and order from us. So when the truck broke down, basically I was doing that with a pop-up tent. I was still selling hot food out of, you know, catering style dishes and stuff. So people could still order. So I would still go to these locations, but I got hooked up with this company that basically did everything for us and put us inside and they gave us a digital menu gave us kind of a, a chow line kind of ordering system so people had to walk up see our menu order four or five things off you know have an option of four or five things and then it's just expedited everything really well and the transition from going to a mobile food truck into kind of a um, stationary style um, service was huge for us. So I've been doing that for about nine months now. And when all this stuff happened, um, it was kind of a, a blessing in the skies because we were trying to pivot and change, you know, name and logo and everything and slow down. But when you're running everything by yourself, it's hard to slow down. Like you don't have enough hours in the day. It seems like there's 48 hours of work in 24 hours. So um, this kind of happened at a I guess an, uh, 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 an opportune time for us, um, for me, especially, um, I lost one of my employees, but he was kind of transitioning out as well. So like, it was kind of a, the way, cause just the way the dynamic of the business was going, we weren't really, um, didn't need a lot of, um, support when it came to employees, 
but that doesn't mean moving from here now, pivoting towards like a catering style is what we're doing. We're actually trying to get into a brick and mortar catering setting so we can bring in other uh, ven food vendors that they can uh, kind of set up their base of operations for a central prep facility. And I want to kind of landlord that out to people and be the, be the um, shining light for them as well. That's great. And I think too, you know, putting that positive spin on it, I definitely appreciate that of, you know, looking at this as an opportunity to kind of continue the changes that you were already putting in place. Um, so Chris, can you, in your opinion, for your advice to other entrepreneurs that are going through this, um, you know, and thank you for sharing kind of the background, because I think that helps us get the grasp on this is that what should entrepreneurs keep doing that they were already doing, mm -hmm. you know, um, coming off of like what you were saying of continuing that path that you had set for yourself? Uh, honestly, just keep moving forward. That's kind of our mission. You know, that's our mission statement in, in my business and then also the military, just, you know, keep moving forward no matter what happens. Uh, seek out information, push the envelope on your business, uh, no matter what happens to you, you got to just keep moving forward. Um, you get knocked down, get back up. I know it's kind of cliche, but it, it definitely uh, fits in this situation for sure. And in our situation, I'm sure a lot of other people out there are like that too. Absolutely. Uh, use your networks, use your resources, uh, mentors, seek out mentors. That was one thing that I, when I started, I didn't really uh, kind of grasp what a mentor would do for me. And, and I always thought mentor was like someone that told me exactly what to do and I followed it. No, it's more of someone that you can just bounce anything off of that's experienced and it doesn't even have to be in your industry either. Um, I found a lot, especially with the VIR program and uh, Bunker Labs, I found a lot of mentorship inside my group and also outside just by the people I've talked to and their experience with their businesses. So like I said, it doesn't have to be specific to your industry to get mentorship. But I think that's the biggest take that I've had since obviously being in the VIR, but also um, hooking up with uh, Bunker Labs and the LLO. Yeah, that's a great piece of advice. Just reiterating to the communication, talking to people, mentors, peer mentorship, network. Um, so yeah, thank you for just reiterating that. I think that that's something in our community that we do talk about a lot too. Um, but you know, on the other side of this, there are maybe things that entrepreneurs should stop doing um, to stop prioritizing. So in your, you know, in your experience, what what is that like during a crisis situation like we're in now? Like I said, I, I kind of already been in the, the transition pivot mode already for the last nine months, but this has kind of accelerated everything. So I think one thing that I realized too at, at the beginning of all that and then what's happening now, try and don't do, I mean, you obviously have to figure out what your capabilities are with, you know, what you're given at this point when income's not coming in, but um, try to stop doing everything by yourself every i mean as an owner as an entrepreneur you're doing 17 jobs that you should be paying somebody to do at least some of them that you, you need to take off your plate so you can concentrate more on the essential stuff for your business um right now that's kind of tough to say because <laughs> you don't have a lot of money coming in or sources of income coming in soon so um that was my advice was to kind of um, every, everything by yourself to save a buck try to do that try to pay the professionals to do their jobs to and then also to get a team that's probably my advice now is to like try to use those networks and use those resources to um, get a team you know a good solid team I did the boots to business the other day and they talk about bail which is a, a bail team and um attorney insurance, um, a lawyer, and I can't remember what the B means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyways, it, it's, it's to get a good team around you. And um, like I said, right now, it's kind of tough to pay someone to do that. But if you can resource it out to people that, because there's a lot of people out there right now that are offering free services, even before this all happened, there's a lot of resources out there like the SBA, the Boots to Business and Bunker Labs. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine where I would be now 
or before if I'd ever had bunker labs in the last, you know, six to seven months. Uh, I wish I would have found them before I started, but here nor there, you know, <laughs> you, you learn by experience. So, right. That, absolutely. Better now than never. <laughs> That's how I see it. Um, but, you know, so also you're speaking about, and, and lastly, I, you know, before we wrap up here, for entrepreneurs that are maybe an early stage and a lot part of our community, and like you're saying, you know, even within uh, those first few years, what can they start doing right now to see this as an opportunity to grow their business or to look at something in a new way? Um, honestly, just understand that you're going to fail at some point. And right now is a prime example of that because a lot of people aren't going to make it in their said whatever venture that they're starting or had started um, that doesn't mean you have to quit uh, that just means you have to find out where you want to go to from here um, you got to find out if it's going to make sense financially you know uh, personally for you as well um, especially with stay in place where you can't leave and make contacts but there is a lot of resources out there to it's crazy how much information that we've been inundated with over the last, you know, three weeks. I thought I was a pretty good at communication on emails and text messages, but <laughs> I've been proven wrong over the last three weeks. That <laughs> I can, there's always more and there's always different avenues to approach, but just know that you're going to um, fail at some point and um, it's okay to fail. It's not, it's never a bad thing because, um, and it's okay to pivot. Like, don't be stuck in your ways so much that if your initial idea hasn't worked, that doesn't mean you can't speak to someone or someone can't give you an idea to pivot off of what you're doing to make it even better. Cause I know that's what kind of my, I was set in my ways at the beginning. I was like, I, before I was going to be just a regular brick and mortar, but I, the financial side of it kind of get me, got to me. And then also I was like, it just makes sense to get my name out there with a the food truck. So, I did that and you know it's been a blessing but it wasn't something that I set out to do initially forever and I and I just kept that in mind like always have a plan for the future too um, even if you have to change that doesn't matter you still need to have some kind of insight on what you want to move towards you know your final goal but that doesn't mean you can't pivot six times or 50 times in between there. <laughs> Yeah, or maybe six times in the last week also, you yeah. know, especially during this time trying things. Well, Chris Vandenberg from Austin, Texas, who is one of our Veterans and Residents members with RWB Chow Bus. Thank you so much for joining us and, and for lending your experience to our community and, and being part of our community as well. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, you guys stay safe out there and God bless.